is June. She says, welcome to our next Romney demo. You rolled over? Good girl. Wait, sit. She says it's time to draw. Today I am outside. I've decided that might be nice to sort of switch gears, change pace, and I'm going to create some value patterns like I was discussing um, on my sheet of paper here. I've created some measurements that are dividing this paper up into four different sections so I can create you know, four different uh, value patterns to kind of take a look at how composition will work well for me. So I've got the tape, I've taped down my sheet of paper. It's a bit windy out here, so that helps to just keep things stable for me as well. And now I'm just measuring a line to center the paper so that I get my spaces divided up nicely. And putting my masking tape down. You know, putting masking tape down on all four edges also creates kind of a frame for a drawing and also makes um, kind of a really nice clean edge, particularly when I'm working with something messy like charcoal or, or with ink wash. When you're dealing with wet media, I always tape down all four edges like you see here. Um, because what happens is when you add wet media, the, the paper kind of bubbles up and then as it dries, it will flatten out again because with the tape, you're essentially stretching the paper like you would stretch a canvas if you're making a painting. So I'm gonna give you a view of what I've got around me. I've got this tree in front of me and I'm gonna take a look at different value patterns, you know, in, the nature that I have around me at this table here, just to give you an understanding of what I'm looking at. So as we're doing these drawings, it's always important to, you know, draw from what you're straight, you're observing directly. You know, every now and then I'll throw in an assignment with a photographic image involved. But with something like this, it's, it's fairly quick to do these value um, patterns. And uh, because there's something more of a study of composition, we, like we were talking about shape and the importance of shape and value and composition. So I've got my uh, viewfinder that we made the other day. So I'm gonna hold this up and look around my environment till I find a good composition to do my value pattern of. For this exercise, you are to use drawing paper, not newsprint. Tape the paper down into four sections as you saw me do. Two sections should be done with charcoal and white Conte and eraser, and two sections should be done with your ink wash. Look for different compositions in your environment and create four different compositional value patterns in these four sections of the paper. Probably the most important step you'll take as an inspiring artist is to learn to translate the forms and volumes of the visual world into flat pieces of value and to arrange those pieces into effective patterns. This special way of seeing and thinking, you might call it the artist's eye or design sense, is acquired gradually through repetition like any complex skill. You begin by squinting at your subject or reference photo. Squinting eliminates most of the distracting detail and small value changes. You'll notice that white or light valued areas stand out clearly while the rest of your visual field is reduced to a mid-tone gray with darker sections. In your picture space, pencil in the main shapes of your subject lightly, paying special attention to the shape and placement of the white pieces. Um, this is something that I don't always do just because I've been doing this for so long. So I think though, however, since you guys are new at this, you will be it would benefit you to lightly pencil in these shapes. You then lay a solid gray tone over everything in the space except those white shapes. The final step is to develop the dark pattern, putting in good dark shapes for local values, details and added contrast with the whites in the areas in, of interest. Your resulting drawing will have values, the white of the paper, a mid-tone gray, and the dark areas. 
you're not aiming for mechanical perfection in applying these values. You know, some minor variations will naturally occur. Just shoot for a de definite uh, mid-tone and a definite dark. So this strategy of utilizing value patterns can be used like a gesture drawing you know, to establish tonal atmosphere before working into creating organizational lines and, and um, citing your subject matter. This process can be used as a preliminary step as smaller thumbnails you know, to help you also to decide on the composition of a more fully developed drawing or painting as well. The ability to compose pictures is a fundamental skill for an artist to develop and a powerful tool for creating compelling and memorable artwork. So you might wonder, you know, why is tonal composition important? Uh, tonal composition is important for many reasons. Uh, the first and most important reason relates to how tonal composition is perceived by the human eye and its effect, effect on the mind of the viewer. The mind's first read or judgment of an image or scene is made in value. The mind's first instinct is to look for the, the shapes of value. Depending on how the shapes are designed and arranged, the mind can assemble the shapes into a cohesive picture. So in essence, if we want to make the most impact on the viewer and audiences, we should first strive to make compelling arrangements of value. Uh, the second reason is that observing and studying tonal compositions trains the artist to see in value. Since observation is the first step towards a mastery of picture making, training the eye to see in value will greatly benefit the artist or the student's ability to design and execute compelling pictures. Third, it exposes the artist to a great art and great pictures, making a habit of staring at, observing, and studying great pieces of art by expert craftsmen and artists um, is a really great way to absorb good compositional skills and strategies. You can see that I'm also, at the same time, working with my different materials in, in different ways. So charcoal I'll use with my fingers, smear things around, build up layers. Then if I need to lighten something up again, I'll use the white to help me do that. And also even drawing with the eraser. With the ink wash, um, it's a lot of fun to see what can happen when you use that wet media and how those tones blend together with a wet on wet. Uh, you just have to be careful uh, not to go too dark too quickly with ink wash because it's harder to pull it away. You can use a rag to wipe certain areas as well. So see what happens for you and um, have a little bit of fun at the same time while working on developing interesting compositional strategies. So on this piece, the ink um, has pretty well dried now. You can see how uh, when it was wet, it tends to bubble up. And then when it dries, it flattens back out again. Like I was saying, it's like stretching a canvas of fabric and gessoing it. It will tighten it up. So now I'm removing the tape. And this is a great thing to do, like I said, when you use like something messy like charcoal, ink wash, any wet media or even, you know, any kind of media. A great way to present your work. 
So make sure that you're careful as you pull your tape off so you don't tear the paper. Um, you might help to like go to the side like I'm doing here. And then you'll see all of a sudden, you know, your drawing, you know, pops really nicely and you can really see that composition. And there you have, you know, the completed piece. Value patterns are a lot of fun to play around with, as well as to help you really, you know, plan a nice solid composition. Here you can see an example of another work that was done by a student and how that translates from a photograph. I hope that you'll um, join me next time and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and you'll see updates for any future videos that I put together. Thanks for joining me.